Jesse Williams is here, ladies and gentlemen, our guest today. Not a normal day. Not a normal day around this radio station. So Jesse shows up for the interview. Yeah. Tell him what happened, Jesse. Uh, let's see. It's a regular Monday so far. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you come up and um, there's a good, I don't know, 50 bodyguards. 50 FOI. FOI. Fruit of Islam for the uninitiated. Mm-hmm. Uh, large gentlemen. Big All bodies, large. <laughs> packed into well dressed, every space. Well dressed. Well dressed. Dapper. Yeah. Um, flowing suits. Uh, crammed into every room, hallway. Um, Did you think that was for you? I assume I was like, it's a pretty secure area. <laughs> I mean, I were usually... You feeling, were you feeling usually, really important? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was feeling pretty protected. Um, and then I dropped my phone on the ground and almost died. They came because, for you? Well, it sounded like a, you know, like I was, I don't know, a little like you were carrying gun, something. gunshot or something. Yeah. Everybody snapped, everybody's head turned around, looked at me. It was pretty good. It's a way to just kind of say welcome. We had uh, the Minister Farrakhan was at the radio station today. That's right. Now I draw, buried the lead on that. Yeah. Yeah. Minister yeah. It's Farrakhan okay. <laughs> it's in okay. the building, right through the glass, uh, preaching. I think I caught him an hour two. Yeah. Um, uh, of his interview. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a rare sight. It's a rare sight in a rare moment. Had you met him before? No. No. Oh. No, I hadn't. I would think somebody like you, who, the circles that you travel in, because I yeah, imagine but... you have like lunch with people like this. This is what I would have thought, Jesse. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Being out in L.A. Which, which is where I am for most of the year because right. of my other job. Um, you don't get to move very often and go see a lot of things. You know, I went to White House Correspondents' Dinner this year, and everybody's right. always like, oh, you must go every year for, for the reasons, you know, same reason you're asking. And no, I don't really get to leave that much. If I do, it's in and out. It's a right. quick 18-hour trip or something. So, um, Wait, you um, say your other job. Grays. So, I know, but you consider Grays your other job? It's one of the things I do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your main? I would think you would think that that's your main oh, job. Oh, it's. I mean, it's my time wise. It's my right. main job. I love it. I'm grateful for it. I have a great time. But I mean, I I do other, other things. things. Yeah. A few things. Yeah. Jess, I'm so happy you're here finally. Yeah, me too. It's what the hell? Is I feel it's taking a long it's time. It's taking a ridiculous amount of time. But again, same thing. It's geography. The distance between LA and here is just hard for me to get out. I'm so. I'm out. so. Um. I don't know if this is like a uh, condescending may sound, but I'm like so proud of you and everything that you've are accomplishing in this voice that you have created in the culture Thank you. it's 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 important impre- and impressive Thank you we're trying and we're needed trying. Yeah we're out here grinding trying to get kill as many birds with as few stones as possible Let's talk about your main job first let's start with the main job and work our way out Okay First of all it's so weird to get a packet on you <laughs> Yeah right Because right. I know you yeah, so then I get weird. a packet and I go oh my goodness he was a teacher all those years in Philly Uh-huh I did not know that Yeah yeah So you started as a teacher yeah, while I was in college, I went to Temple University. Shout out to you. Um, I taught. Yeah, I started as a sub. I, I cleared my schedule like two days a week to, to substitute in the community, and I tutored on the weekends and um, was an activist and, 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 and founded an organization, was part of other organizations, including Friends and Family of Mumia. And um, then uh, as, as school wrapped up, I stayed and taught uh, full-time high school. Um, oh, before I moved, before I moved to uh, to Brooklyn, yeah. High school students. High school, yeah. The you know incredibly important years, but I also looked like I belonged in high school. At <laughs> yeah, the time. especially at like that 20, time. You know, twenty one, twenty two. Yeah. Um, I definitely had students bigger than me with kids. Um, uh, so it was uh, it was demanding, but it was absolutely the best job I've ever had. Really, no question, no question, the best job I've ever had. The most, you know, J- uh, uh, Jadena, also a school teacher. I heard that. Look I at did that. hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys should hang out, have a dinner. I know, we haven't <laughs> met. We haven't met, but I've heard very impressive things about that. I could see the, the two of you having yeah. plenty to connect on. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jess, so what are we talking? Okay, so we got, we're a teacher. So, we're yeah. doing Grey's Anatomy season finale. I just watched it yesterday because I was on happened. DVR. We've got a documentary I executive produced called Stay Woke, the Black Lives Matter movement, which mm-hmm. premieres this Thursday on BET at oh, 9 p.m. Oh, it is this Thursday. This Thursday on BET at 9 p.m., documentary uh, around mo- the movement yeah. uh, at large. Got a brogy to talk about. I whatever. know. I love a brogy. I don't yeah. even talk to people in full sentences I anymore. Know. The brogy app is uh, lit. Okay, so um, how does that work when you have a show like Grey's Anatomy? Because it's so, it's either like, it, you either watch Grey's Anatomy or you don't. Mm-hmm. You, know what bo- you know what is upsetting to me when I say to somebody, because a lot of people know who you are, but if somebody does it and I go, you know, he was also in the Ciroc commercials. 
Oh yes. And it works. And, and it, it connects. works. Yeah. Yeah. D- just Those the strangest. Dope though. Those were dope commercials. They were kind of fly. They were kind of fly. They were kind of compelling. They were a little unlike unlike other things. And we had a nice they had a nice assembly of of faces in there that uh, you might not know two of the guys, but you know somebody. You might know yes. Aaron Paul, you might know Michael K, you might know me. Um And then if was, you weren't say a Grays fan or something like that or didn't know you from they right. remember your face from yeah. that. Yeah. Because it was yeah. a nice little group That's of people. That's funny. I had not thought about that as a reference. It happens. I kind of forgot about I that. I use yeah. it sometimes uh-huh. when talking to a particular person. So, yeah, sure, sure. I might may- have to employ that when <laughs> a grandma sh- comes up to me. And who are you? Are you somebody? I'm no the guy more. from the Ciroc commercials. Yeah. I try to sell you liquor. <laughs> that's so funny. And now knowing you better, I think that's a little bit of a, I would think that it was a, it would be a strange fit. It, it was a little, yeah, it's a little weird. I'm not a showy, flashy, right. hop off the jet in sunglasses and strut around. I'm not a peacock kind of dude. Right. Yeah. But it yeah. made sense, I guess, no, at the I'm time. Not. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was just, it was just, do you want to go do a Ciroc commercial with Puff and Michael K was a homie and, uh. Yeah, it it was it just made sense. Yeah, yeah, it was good. You didn't do the Bad Boy concert last night, did you? No. No, no, no. They had a Bad Boy reunion show at, at the bar. Yeah, yeah, no, I heard and it sounds like it was amazing. it sounds like they've been pretty dope. You go outside? Are you out? Are you out? Are you social? I'm, no. I I sometimes I'm working right now. I'm shooting a movie in Atlanta, right. producing this, producing another documentary about School to Prison Pipeline with Norman Lear. I'm in Florida. I'm in LA. You have I'm, no time I'm, I'm, I'm grinding. Spool, I'm spoolery. up here doing press for a nonprofit. Like I mean press and and and, and some work for a nonprofit. So you're it's it's work. It's you're work not time. in these streets, and yeah. you're a dad, and you're, yeah, you're... yeah, all that stuff. Like, I, I I get out once in a while. All right, so what's happening? So tell me about the movie. So it comes right. out Thursday on BET. Yeah, Thursday on BET. Uh, we did a documentary. We wanted to kind of we wanted to take a look at you know the Black Lives Matter movement the, and the movement for Black Lives, which is the larger the larger uh, uh, movement, and, and just kind of catalog it. People, mm. everybody has opinions about. It. Everybody has a version of an interpretation of what they think it is, and we wanted. To, I just wanted to. It's directed by Lorenz Grant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm an executive producer, um, and and we wanted to make a a project that humanizes the experience and the movement, and show that people that it's not this kind of just disembodied trend. There are human beings that are making incredible sacrifices in their life, um, particularly Black women, uh, and, and um, uh, that are organizing and mobilizing people on the streets to go speak and go take over the halls of power and have a direct impact on policy that can have a real effect on our lives and, and the lives of our children. So it's not just, you know, take it out of out of Twitter in the realm of hashtags right. and, and put it on the street. Yeah, because I was going to say, there's so many different perceptions about them. And some of the, you know, I've heard everything from that they're polarizing to that they're a, they're a hash, it's just a mm. hashtag. Well, that's, to- that's what you, that's what happens every single time any black, brown, or disenfranchised group stands up for themselves. Mm. Is they are it becomes polarizing, right? Because if you if you spend generations with a boot on your neck and you ask for some room to breathe and mo- try to move that boot off, you're being polarizing. You're inconveniencing the system, the mm-hmm. status quo. It's um, it's not uh, you know you're told you're insane to want to to demand you know the dignity that you that you damn well deserve. Um, so that I, I say that to say it's not surprising that we're gonna get it. We're gonna get you know misrepresented and and be told that we're being that it's controversial. Somehow it's controversial. For uh, for for folks, in particular, black folks, to uh, want to be protected and enjoy equal justice under the law mm. that they fought on the front lines of every single war this country's ever had um, to earn and have yet to receive. Have you been involved with them since the inception, or are you? Uh, pretty much, yeah. yeah, yeah. From a degree, I'm by no means a leader or a founder or the head. You know, nothing, nothing. Just you a know. supporter. Um, yeah, I'm 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 a supporter. I'm an activist at. At, uh, at heart and, and have been. I understand the culture. I understand historical context mm-hmm. for, for movements um, towards liberation of people. And I try to I try to be supportive wherever I can. I just happen to have a platform and I choose to use it to, to lift other uh, I other think it's such up. an important time to do a piece like that. To really it is un- because show what it is. Like, what is it? What are we doing? Even if you're like, so, you want to be involved, but you don't want yeah. to dive all the way in. Right. Like, what are the levels of involvement that you can have? Well, because and- narratives matter, right? Media yeah. matters. That is, media is marketing. Race, by and large, is a marketing campaign. To just What? The, race is marketing. It's selling you on why it is okay for, for white power to exist why it's really what you deserve, why black and brown folks have really never been been anything, and why it's okay to have the systems in place that we do that keep folks down, why it's okay to have housing discrimination where folks cannot move out of the ghetto. It is illegal. It was for, gener- for a generation of time when the suburbs were invented. 
there was for there was a period of time where we black folks can't you can't buy a home you can't get a loan it's mm -hmm. that is, the sit there's systems are that are in place that put us where we are today and we don't learn history in school you learn white supremacy yeah. for 12 years you learn to believe that you never were anything and everybody that has accomplished anything looks a certain way and that civilization started in <laughs> europe um, Jesse, do you scare people sometimes with this type of talk? Especially, I would imagine that- It scares that me to listen to the nonsense. Yeah. No, listen, I'm not saying what you're yeah. saying is not, no, not true. It's not true. I'm just saying, especially in the world that you play in, you're in LA, you're mm -hmm. in a very, like, you know, yeah. popular show of all types of people. You know what I mean? I just wonder if that type of talk scares people sometimes. It, I'm sure it does. You don't but care. That, that's not, I mean, that's, a, right. that's their problem. That's not my problem. Like, right. I'm- I'm going to be myself. You know, there's a, there's as a general rule, like I don't let you disrespecting me convince me to disrespect myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's a, where we can't, we have to stop living a reactionary lifestyle. How is somebody going to receive, you know, the, the situation where you, you feel this kind of what you want to call a microaggression or a, or a little racist comment or a sexist comment because mm -hmm. by the way, all men are guilty of kind of absorbing this patriarchal structure where we don't know how to actually treat women with the respect they deserve. Um, and when, when you're inconvenienced and then you have that ride home or you're on the train home and you think about what you should have said and how it made you feel and how you, how you could have stood up for yourself or how you could have handled it differently, like we're constantly inconvenienced but then to speak out is what's treated like an act of aggression. Yeah. <laughs> Angie, that seemed a little harsh, you know, the way you right. told me about myself when I stomped all over you. Yeah. Like, no, you were, I was inconvenienced first. And we have, and we have to learn to get comfortable. And I think what we're seeing in this, this younger generation is folks getting comfortable in their own skin. I mean, like, you know what? I can raise my hand and say I deserve better. You don't I see a little shift happening? You don't see? I absolutely see yeah. a shift happening. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that... Um, yeah, you know, there, it's very easy to criticize millennials and the younger generation that grows up on social media and there's a lot of fame whoring and that stuff happening, cer certainly. But, but this <laughs> I is talk also, about that all the time. It's ruining it. Ruin, it ruin, it's ruining there's us. There's a lot of things that are ruining us. There's, you know, culture, yeah. like the beauty of actual presence, like being present in the moment and communicating and connecting with folks. But this is also a generation that got out and stood out in the streets in Ferguson and demanded mm. the respect that they deserve. What we we've our whole lives we've watched ourselves get stomped over. Remember Eleanor Bumpers here in New York, like getting people getting beat up by cops, yeah, and those cops getting off. And finally, people stood up, and it was this generation that had a huge part in that. And they deserve credit for that. You heard the other cop got acquitted today. They yeah, in Baltimore. Yeah. Um, yep, acquitted. And right. uh, there's the ever all the concerns of the city are about property. Mm -hmm. Don't don't hurt property. We can destroy black people. And bodies, but don't hurt our property, or else you are the criminal we've always um, groomed you to be. Wait, Baltimore. I'm talking about what was it? Is it Freddie Gray? Yeah. The, that, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Uh, disturbing. Normal. Oh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. said normal. It's, it's. I mean, it's. It's normal, yeah. and that's and 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 we. It's it's easy to feel uh, beaten down by that, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of dejected, and it's hard to get motivated again. You went in Ferguson, right? You went. I was yeah. You I've went been a few times. What was that experience like? I can't even imagine. It was, it was, it's one of those things. If you go on to a plantation and you, but you're seeing an uprising, it's really beautiful, but it's yeah. also really horrifying because you're on a plantation. Yeah. But the uprising is magic, yeah. right? Like those. That's that's kind of Ferguson. It was really I, beautiful to see folks together. It's it's really this love movement, right? Like folks are really loving each other and and wanting what's best for each other and building and connecting and and. Um, but it's on a plantation. <laughs> but but right. and it very much felt like a, yeah. a, a I don't use that hyper like hyperbolically. It was very much felt like a plantation state in that we're out in the streets all day and night and there's cops patrolling, rolling around, harassing us, mm. Met, like instigating beef, instigating physical confrontations with people, flashing lights in their face, harassing them. You know, I can't curse to really articulate what, you can. So, Go what ahead. they were saying. We They're have buttons for that. Constantly talking shit, constantly. Talking, what, what, what? Like trying to like really popping shit off. Wow. Well, we're just walking. Like I'm walking, with women, kids, all ages. Like it was very aggressive, very antagonizing. Mm. That you know, that was my experience in Ferguson for periods of three days at a time, two days. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily represent everything, but I saw it with my own eyes mm -hmm. um, consistently. Um, and that's and that's a narrative that, that I remember watching the, um, the the I think it was Complex did an interview with J Cole while he was out there on the ground, okay. and he said something similar about 
the how beautiful it was yeah. at the same time to see you know it's that like type of anywhere where you are in particularly because there's so many um there's so many narratives about uh deunification in the community and how antagonistic we are towards each other and 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 there are there is kind of competition profile and posting up you know and it's kind of whether yeah. it's guys over girls or guys over guys whatever it is petty petty kind of tribalist stuff territorial stuff we have a lot of things that divide us but um but being there it's like it it almost is a little bit like being at the inauguration being at Obama's inauguration the first what time like? it's it's just magic yeah. you know what i mean it's just it's truly beautiful you can feel it feel it it's palpable everybody is just there's so much love mm -hmm. radiating off of off of folks and pride and a break it's like a moment of relief from and i'm talking about the inauguration now right. ferguson was not a moment of relief but but the energies are similar. Yeah. Where you're just getting a lot of positive energy from folks that really want to be together. We really want to be together um, and spread love. Mm. Um, and and uh, so in Ferguson, I found that. But it was it was active. It was changing. It was you know it was it was um, you know look at how people handled being tear gassed. You know, and we talk about some of that in the documentary. Oh, I um, can't wait to see. Is it. is you know when folks are getting tear gassed in Ferguson, you have folks getting tweeted from. People sending tweets from Arab Spring and Palestine telling us, you know, telling them, I should say, how to handle being tear gassed. Oh, like Use advice milk or Coca-Cola instead of water in your eyes. That's going to make it worse. Like like using when social use, media social is actually media as helpful. A tool, yeah. Wow. As a tool for communication to give you, you know, again, because is that tri is that true? Milk and, and yeah. Milk. Yeah. Milk and, and Coca-Cola, apparently. Um, but like, you know, in Ferguson, they're coming out with tanks. These are cops pointing automatic weapons at That's children insane. and women at noon on a Thursday on television. Oh, wow. And, I don't, and, and nobody's got a problem with that. Mm. And we see. So, OK, take me back to the show. So Thursday, what? what, what Thursday, Thursday at nine, we're going to see uh, this documentary, Stay Woke, uh -huh. on BET. I love the name. Um, it's a great name, right? It's a, it's a pretty great, great, it's a great name. Is that it's yours? Great, I mean, I... I chose to name it that, yeah. me and the team, uh, Lorenz, who's the boss, uh -huh. um, uh, Grant, Lorenz Grant, the director. Um, but the, the phrase, I had nothing to do. The phrase actually, I you think, didn't originated. Invent stay Woke? Stay Woke, actually, I was looking it up. I think the first time it was really of course uttered you was, were looking it up. It was That's... Erica Badu. Was it? And like on her New America album, I think she, she, she had a line about it. And then it, it didn't really resurface again for a couple of years. And then folks on Twitter were kind of using it. We also just kind of use Woke, like, for, um, yeah, you know, I use uh, it all the time. You know, I like it. Um, so, so um, Erica Badu. I think she was the first first person to that, coin that, it to say it, and then she didn't. She wasn't saying it with this intention, I don't think. But to put those two words together, you know, you got to stay woke. I think it was about for <laughs> two women about their man or something. I, I love know. that you care enough though to re actually research you that. Look at the you origin of what special type of human <laughs> being to care enough to say, well, who invented this? We say this? a lot of crazy things that we don't realize are actually like inherently racist, like gyp, like you gypped me. Is right, that, it's actually a racist term for gypsy against gypsies. <gasps> gypsies are thieves. How dare we? You know, what like else? Tell things. me one other one. Tell me another one. I don't know. There's it's a like lot a of, human encyclopedia like, here we have today. Like I don't know. There's one like wait. Well, this isn't offensive, but like wakes. Why we call it a wake at a funeral? Yeah, is because when folks used to, you know, and I think it's like the 1700s, folks would um, get so drunk that they would just be passed out for huge periods of time and you don't know if they're dead or not. That's kind of pre-modern medicine, right? So you would take them and you put them on the table in the kitchen and leave them until it see if they wake. It's a wake to make sure, the wake is to make sure they're dead, to give you a couple, a little bit of time before you bury them underground to see if, to confirm that they're dead. That's, um, a, that's awful. That's really a pleasant uh, story. Thank you for coming by well, that's today. That's what I'm here for, this. Debbie uh, <laughs> Donald Downer <laughs> Thank you here. for sharing that moment <laughs> with us. <laughs> All right, um, I can't wait to see. Yeah. So Thursday, we're gonna, we'll, we'll, it's there... dope. It's Thursday at, at BT at, at nine o'clock, and it and it'll re-air. But it really explores, you know, what we're trying. What we made sure not to do. It's not a conclusive story, right? The movement lives. The movement is in its adolescence. By, by and large, we just started, right? right. It's ever changing. But we wanted to get on record some things of where it's, it's a at. good time for that. It's a great time. We we talk about its origin. We talk about you know like what actually happened was happening on the ground at the moment that kicked it off we make sure to have like the originators of the of the network and the hashtag black mm -hmm. lives matter on there certainly um and and then talk about where the movement's going how people have found their ways into kind of the public space how to impact policy also how do we handle the onslaught of the fox news the far right the people who lie for a living um trying to reframe it and how we push back against that and kind of find ourselves in that process so it's a whole it's it's kind of a little bit of a mini mini bio of where we are Amazing. And we can all see it on Thursday. On Thursday. At 9 o'clock on BET. That's right.
And then, so I know you're doing all these events, too. I'm so mad I didn't go to the Flint event. Mm. That looked amazing. Yeah, that organization um, that I'm a founding member of, it's Ryan Coogler, mm-hmm. dope, famed director. He's yes. like come out with uh, Black, um, Black Panther, director of Fruitvale and Creed. Uh, family to me, um, him and Ava DuVernay. And, uh, it's a great group. It's a network, really, called Blackout for Human Rights. Um, the first we, event was in Harlem? First, in Harlem, we did a, a Riverside Church. Yeah, that, that you guys that, remember that. That was the one that streamed live. Everybody was revolt. watching. Yep, it was uh, on Martin Luther King Day. We found out the, J. Cole was married, that that event. Googler, uh, yep, just for point of arrest. Funny. Just that was, for a yeah, point of for, reference. Sure, sure. That's where that story broke. I mean, both of them were <laughs> loved that moment. Um, but we it did a beautiful, so, beautiful. That was, was so, so awkward. Gra- it, it was, was so good. great, yeah. though, because it was so. Man handled it really well. Kugler is the sweetest person, the most real person. You can tell there was no ill uh, intent at no, all. No, at all, at all. <laughs> but it was amazing to watch <laughs> that in the men, discomfort. Men trying to, we're trying to learn how to communicate with each other, ladies. <laughs> we're trying, and sometimes we're going to stumble. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, there were that many network, amazing moments. By the that way, network that network is event. is is really real. Talk about magic. Like, really, really dope. Folks trying to get together and, you know, it came up out of uh, figuring out how to basically divest from corporations and and, and basically disrupt a system that is funding and supporting um, the, uh, you know, the oppression of the state. So we decided like Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year. That was the one in Harlem was on Black Friday? Or that no, was no, flint? but the organization was stemmed out of Black Friday okay. uh, before before Thanksgiving, we decided what can we do to stage kind of rallies and walkouts and not shop at Walmart and other big box stores that uh, either fund negative policies uh, or legislation and or could do a better job of representing the folks that they employ. Right. Right. I want us to place like Walmart that people that work there can't even afford to eat. Um, so so we started doing blackout events. Like don't shop. Instead of shopping, come to the th- a theater in Oakland and we'll stream, we'll play movies for free. And we'll have panel discussions around social justice. Mm-hmm. Instead of shopping, come do this. And giving you alternatives, instead of just telling you what not to do, mm-hmm. we'll give you an alternative, something to do. So then the, then we went to Martin Luther King Day. We wanted to take back Martin Luther King's legacy from this like trinket, this trinketizing of him. Everybody loves Martin Luther King now, but you wanted to kill him, and you did kill him when he was here. You know, mm-hmm. the same things that they tell, they, they tell me when I get my death threats on Twitter and all that. Do you really? Like, oh, of course. Of course. These people are the Why? same. Why? the same people. It's just a different. It's just a different. What is their decade. reasoning? They're they're just really blatant, in, they're really insecure white supremacists. No, but they're blatant terrified. races, or is it masked? Is it? Oh like, no, it's well. They're all they always hide behind like an avatar. Notice how these people never show their face. It's like a shield with like a badly drawn eagle and like a American flag missing a star and, and two followers and or yeah or three thousand and wow. they, you know nigga this and I'm gonna kill you and this and that. Really? It ain't. I mean, it's nothing. These are just. It's is just that some, regular basis though? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. It's 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 uh, it concern it concerns me like one eighteenth of a second once ever. Like really? I'm not I don't give that no. Nah, there's they can't. That had to surprise you out of the gate the first time you no, saw it. I've, really? No, no. How could this no I, I don't know. It, it's as it, much as I know things happen in the world, when you see it and you're confronted with I've it. I've been and confronted it's, with that my whole life. My 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 I think it's I think it, that's part of that and might be where I'm from and how I was raised, like I'm black and I'm white Mm -hmm. and I grew up in the hood in Chicago and I moved to the white suburbs and half my family's white and half my family's black and I'm kind of the invisible man in many ways. Like I hear how real, how people actually really talk Mm -hmm. about the other side and I understand how white power works because that's how I was, I was taught at home, studied that and have a historical perspective on how exactly white supremacy is used as a tool to make certain groups small, why we, why we make Africa look smaller on the map. Than it actually is. Mm. All maps that you've raised that right? to see is Africa that is smaller than it actually is. Yes, it's the brainwash is deep, right? Like you think that those we call those columns Roman columns. Just those Jesse's the type columns. of person like you're in the not, room for thirty minutes with, and you leave and you're furious. Yeah, <laughs> you just want to. So, yeah, like you have to, like, so right. that foundation. Like I can't be surprised with some oh. red-faced loser from Tennessee who th- who's thinks it, because because the thing about whiteness, and I can say this because I am white, um, uh, <laughs> is that it's entirely dependent on having a, having its boot on the neck of blackness. Like it's an invented state, right? Whiteness didn't exist until it was time to own other people as property. It didn't exist. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a term. It wasn't a defining cultural term. You were Irish or you were Italian or you were French. And then when they needed to convince poor white people to vote, to be... To, to unify. To, and yeah, to unify <laughs> against, to justify uh-huh. the oppression of other people, 
and to keep being a being a worker, a labor class. How does the white side of your family feel about the, your stance on things? They love it. Yeah. They understand <laughs> if you understand the truth, there's nothing to be threatened about. Right. Like there's nothing to be and I don't mean some like holy truth. There are multiple, you know, there's many ways to interpret mm -hmm. things and I am certainly not always right and I'm learning. But there are there are <laughs> uh White folks have been on this on the side of and worked towards liberation of of other people in every in every movement there's ever been. Right. White, you know, ag actual like independent thinking and being part of uh, civil rights or other or other movements is 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 part of white people's history as well as, as well as oppression is. Like right. you don't it's what you choose to as associate with. So my you know my mother's rago about about civil rights. Like she's she's really serious. She would have about to it. be she's, to have you. Um. Well, she wouldn't have to. Well, hey, I mean, yeah, have kind me, of. Have me. I'm a product of her and my dad. Like, right. it's like we grew up. Like it's okay to know the truth. You don't have to be insecure about it. I have, plenty, you know, you know, a huge white family and a, and a and a whole bunch of white friends, and they're normal. It's you know, like you don't, <laughs> right. you can you can be fully aware that Trump is a racist, right? Without having it to be a threat to you. There's something really unique I find about when we talk about like police brutality and stuff particularly online where everybody's a tough guy on like the YouTube message boards. That's, that is a problem for sure with like the social media generation. But when like, if you go on YouTube and watch like white people talking shit to cops, like they- Is there a thing? Is oh, there a, a category? Huge thing. Huge thing. Stop well, like, it. Cop, white people getting pulled- Has ever, anybody else in the room watches? Every, watch? well, but like, but, but everybody knows like when you see like, when you've ever seen in real life the way like your white friends talk to cops, like you're like, whoa! You see how white people talk to police officers? But wait, this is a c category so, so on, thing. It's a, if you on YouTube, there's like sovereign nation people and like just hardcore white people that will like they know their rights, they know right. their rights. So when a cop pulls them over and they they defend themselves, and they say, "I'm not giving you my ID. I don't need to give you my ID. That's not I don't that's not necessary. I'm traveling. You know, I'm a free person traveling. Da da da." And they just break it down to cops. They yell at them. They curse at them. They threaten them. They won't roll their window down. They videotape them. And they whatever. drive off fine. Oh, and not only do they drive off fine, I bring that up because the message, the 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 comments are all like, "Absolutely, f those pigs trying to stop you. This ain't a you know, this ain't a police state. You deserve to defend your right." Da da da. Now, the only thing that all that needs to change that equation is your skin not being white. Sandra Bland had the nerve to smoke a cigarette in her own car, and this segment of whiteness ripping her apart how she deserves to die because she didn't treat him with respect da, da, da. if he had she had been white she would have been a hero you can watch on you can watch on youtube white people beating cops up mm -hmm. fighting with cops punching them in the face hitting them cursing them out running from them and the cops never consider it and i shouldn't say never most of the time vast majority of the time never consider snatching their life reaching in their in their holster pulling a gun out and taking their life. That's not part of it. You don't need to do that. Mm. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. It's unnecessary. In England, cops don't even have guns. They just guy can be running around with a hatchet, and they figure out a way to contain him and take him down because he's a human being. Right. So part of that, and that's not that's not, and I would never. That's not. Cops are human beings that were brought up in our school system. They were trained to believe that black people ain't shit to begin with in the first place. So it's it's part of conditioning. It's not just police. It's what other people do as well. Oh, you, Jesse. Yeah. Everything's fucked up. It's all fucked up now. But once you know that, <laughs> right. there's a little bit of a freeing. There's a freeing thing about that because I don't know. I feel wound up and and and. Yeah, I feel wound up too. But I also do you think Minister Farrakhan had something to do with that <laughs> setting the tone today? No, <laughs> I've heard <laughs> okay. that before. Um, <sighs> but I but I do think that you know it's the gift and the curse of knowledge. That's why they say ignorance is bliss. Right? Yeah, you just be out here chilling. I don't know. I don't really care. I don't really care about politics. But you complain if you know if something happens that doesn't go your way. Right. Um, but I do um, think that there is a, um, it is a liberating thing and an incredibly necessary thing to at least to understand where you come from and that there's something to be proud of and there's a reason to stand up straight and look folks in the eye because you deserve to be there. And there's, and we find so much, particularly as a teacher dealing with young people, young black and brown kids, you know, because uh, by and large, a lot of these issues are, are very similar for um, black and Latino or Chicano kids um, in terms of state violence and stuff. Um, is that like us regaining an ability to be confident in ourselves? And our mm. your ten-year-old son should know how to look people in the eye and speak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I remember my dad would always like make sure that if we needed to find out what time practice was or where where I needed to be for something, he would never tell that to me or find out for me. I would have to pick up the phone and go call that adult and find out and ask it and like organize it for myself, mm. which terrified me. Yeah. But like you need to practice belonging. And like you, that you deserve to be there and have that confidence. Because when you show up in school 
Like we show up at college, if you're lucky enough to get to college, you show up at college mad late behind white folks and behind people that are like in, grew up in supported societies. Yeah. Like you have 18 year olds that are freshmen in college that are just now having the first experiences that these white kids had when they were 10. Mm. When they were 10. Like it's not nothing to them. We're, it's a really competitive society and we're falling behind like at drastic, drastic rates. What are you going to do to fix it, Jesse? Well, like, this is always the problem <laughs> with identifying a problem. Is yeah, you now fix it. What are you going to do about it, Jesse? It. You think <laughs> <laughs> you, if you point out something, something messed up that you're also burdened with having to try to solve it, which yeah. um, is uh, predictable, but at, at the core, unfair. But um, <laughs> um, but we're working on it. We're, we're working on it. And part of it is just a, a, a general state of wokeness, which is to be aware um, right, which is just a slang version of be aware and be open to the possibility that um, uh, an experience outside of your own um, can be true and have validity. Or it can be changed. Yeah, and there, and if it's yeah. true, then it can be changed. Because I never, if I don't agree that there's a problem, I'll, like, I'll never contribute to solving it, mm -hmm. right? Like this, but that's kind of what like white privilege impacts is like this, you know, white privilege is the ability to, if it didn't, if you don't experience it, you can pretend it didn't exist. Um, and this, this notion that the, um, pain of your neighbor is dependent on your belief in it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like your pain doesn't exist unless I believe it. Like your version of the cop wouldn't really have hit you across the face with his, with his baton and right. done that unless you had really done something. Right. Because that's my experience. Because I make myself central to to the narrative, and that um is something we need to resist. And and I'm really proud of the movement for using the tools at their disposal to voice their truths mm -hmm. and become a community and be that village for each other. So you're not a prisoner of whatever you, your neighborhood in Kansas City and you don't have any um, transgender folk around you to help support you and know how you can be. Now you have a community that'll be there and be there for you. Um, so Dope. trying to be creative with that. I love that. Okay, what, so, so somebody who's home sleep, mm -hmm. not woke. Not what woke. Is the, what is a starter kit? Like somebody who is like um, hmm. all the way not woke and doesn't want to really be woke because it could be tiring. Yeah. What is a starter kit of something that everybody could do? Well, as a general rule, if there's something that you want to know or don't know, if I say a word, this is something I've, I was always taught to do as a kid. If I hear a word, I'm going super basic here. Please. If I, if I was ever heard a word, my parents always made sure, like, listen. You hear a word, you don't know what it is, write it down, and then when you get home that night, look it up. Mm. Super, super basic. If you super if people, helpful, though. If people are telling, saying words, you don't know what they mean. Yes. Go on the side later, find out what those words mean. Build your vocabulary. Build your ability to comprehend information that's coming on around you so you are not lost. Because that's behind. a big part of the problem. Is, is being literate on the issues, right? Yeah, We're not also that a disconnect in, so, in terms of the people who understand the issues and how they deliver the information and the people who are disconnected which, from it. Right, and, and I can feel condescending and I feel intimidated. Yes. And talking about policy, I don't understand how that yeah, yeah, works. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll be kind of embarrassed to ask because mm -hmm. um, then that makes me smaller, yeah. right? And, that, mm -hmm. and that's totally real. Um, so which I is think why I think it's important for, for when our artists take a stand. Mm. You know, I think people who maybe not it be, may, may not resonate to somebody who's speaking over their head yeah. looks at somebody like a Kendrick or a Cole yeah. or, or somebody in, in like plain that. language or in, in your language mm -hmm. um, but also I'm because I'm not going to burden myself with like we don't have really have li we use libraries anymore but in our day it would be like going back to the in library, our day right, right? and in 10 feet of snow to no, school it's easier now you go Google you Google it's it. Like, so but like Google that shit. Yeah. Like when you hear something, you don't know what it means, like go down a little bit of a rabbit hole and Google it from reputable sources, not Newsmax or yeah. Fox or something. Um, but <laughs> but um, but when if meet your meet it on your level. I'm not gonna I can give you and I actually might start posting these, like reading lists for historical context. That's an to, amazing to, idea. Un, to understand just how where we are today, because you can never it becomes a game of whack a mole, like trying to solve we constantly try to treat the the um, the symptoms mm -hmm. of a problem instead of the actual sickness, right? It's like Western medicine. Like, to, don't try to figure out why it is that you have really poor circulation. Just medicate it to stop it. Yeah, take um, a pill. So, so we're trying to figure out like why it is that we have police brutality. Where do you know where the police came from? Do you know that we only we had pol police were in, were created to collect slaves, to chase runaway slaves, mm. and then patty rollers. That's why we had police. The police were invented to collect black people. Good Lord, Jesse. Um, so as you start to build policies around that and generations change, is it, is, it, is it possible that there's probably going to be an adverse effect on 
folks that used to be property that are now claiming to be people, but they've never seen any- <laughs> Claiming to be. Claiming to be people. I don't know you're a person. I've never seen any proof that you're a person. I was told by everything around me that you're a person. Mm. When people say, I'm talking about, oh, that girl was beautiful. You know, she's blonde, blue-eyed. So blonde, blue-eyed means beautiful. So what does black and dark hair mean? Mm. Jesus is white. So what does that mean I am? Like, and that's just on a Sunday morning to a three-year-old kid watching TV. Right. Um, yeah, you're going to have to change the world. Well, we, there's a lot of folks, <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of folks doing a lot of incredible work yeah. right now. I'm, and I'm really proud of all of them. I love that. All right. So, um, c can we talk a little fuckery? Let's talk some fuckery. <laughs> can we talk a little fuckery? Not to say that your app is fuckery, right? But... This is an enjoyable thing that you've created. Yeah, Abroji is. There's no, we're not changing the. Fun. It's not necessarily changing the world. You know, there are some ways. Of course, I'm figuring out ways to change of the world, course even with Abroji. Of course, there is. So, if you don't know, Jesse, yeah. Jesse came up with this app. I have it on my phone, right? And so, you know, all these little gifts that people use. It's it goes right into your um, keyboard keyboard, so that yeah. you could use it in conversation, so I could communicate in app in, in gifts. Yeah. Don't I do this all the time? I communicate in gifs now. Yeah. And then yeah, you so have it I. broken down into categories. We like, have it like a real like. You have a respect category. Respect with a K of category. Course. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, lit. Yes. We have, we all have, the important uh, things in come life. Come on, son. We have, you know, all that. Uh, uh, word. Um, just, but so, so yes, it started actually um, talk, talk from to him. Uh, Aaron Drakeley Williams and Glenn Kino and myself. I'm not I ignoring you. Company. I'm not ignoring um, you. I'm pulling up my and, my. and And we realized early on that like particularly like what we call urban culture, right? Which is essentially black culture, black and Latin culture, um, uh, drives, creates, and is really the cultural leader on the way we talk, how we talk, uh, the way we dress, the what music we listen to, slang, forms of, these are all forms of cultural communication. So good. And we kind of, uh, and we realized there were no, this is before there were brown emojis even. Like why are black people running Twitter, driving national conversations all over the world in China, for God's sake, right? All over the world is like black culture. And urban culture and but we don't own any of the tools that ex that share this language um and and we wait and we wait till like corporations like validate what we like like what we, the way we talk Facebook. is ghetto and ratchet until you decide to braid your hair and now it's like high fashion or right. you decide to wear a do rag <laughs> and now you decide to plump your lips and it's okay and you decide that like old navy's gonna sell me jeans by saying on fleek you know what I mean? It's like, no. Nah, so you so want to we'll own just, it. We want to own it. We want to start it and, le and, and be the leaders that we are. So we created a device that, and we realized that gifts are what everybody's doing. So we curated these um, incredible categories um, that are incredibly diverse, uh, b believe me, in, in like a real way, not in like a network television. No, they're diversity. so good. It's so good. Um, you can talk in gifts. That's you it. Talk in gifts. We have, I mean, we got, we got, you know, Calm Down, Black Girl Magic, l you know, the regular stuff, LOL, Yes, it's Plenty no. of Beyonce for the Beehive. Beyonce has her own category. She's earned that. Prince has his own category of gifts, the Shade Master that that, that is Prince. Um, so it lives on your keyboard so, so when you're texting. So a lot of other things are really about like gifts or for like, I want to send you a funny cat gift or something that's not, ours is about communication. Like, how do I feel right now? Angie's like, yo, come to the show. I want to go to word. I want to say like word or thank you. So I go to thank you. Boom. There's a gift that's, it adds tone and texture. Like once I send you an emoji, a winking emoji, you've seen it. Yeah. I guess, oh, you've seen it. I can't send it to you again. Like you're, it's the same thing over. Gifts, we get new ones every day. They had you the Billboard Music all Awards the time. last night. Yeah. Right. Well, people, you know, the shade, the the sh people, all everybody shading the Prince tribute. Like we're, or, or I should say, the other night. Um. So now we have gifts of that. Yeah. That's gonna be on. Oh, they're up already. Yeah. Oh, course. good. We like we, and that's the other thing. We're we do it right away. That's so. So good. Empire came on last night. Like we have those gifts. We have the gifts. You know, and we. So so it's current. Um, it's fast. It lives on your keyboard while you're texting. You just load it into your keyboard. So but you there's can also get the a separate app, app on the app store, regular app store, app store or the Google Play Store if you okay. have Android or or uh, iOS. Um, you also can, if you have gifts that you love, you can go to abrogiapp.com and put them in, yeah. um, and you know, and, and and we'll load them and put them in the appropriate categories. So good. Um, it's fun. It's easy. It's free. It's free. free? How do you make it's money free. off that then? Don't worry about it. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> no, we're not making our money off it right now. We're just like it's about You're trying like, to change the we world. We just wanted somehow. to get into the marketplace because this the tech world is really really blando. Right. It really, really does. <laughs> is that, does it is really, that, is that a, a technical term? Technical That's term, a blando. Term. And um, and but, I've but, I'm learning about some things that are blando. I'm going to talk to you mm -hmm. about this later. I want to pick your brain because yeah. I have some. You know, I have. A, I'm in the um the the literary business now. You are 
you know. I, I was going to try to find the appropriate place for this. So congratulate <laughs> just, Angie on this. The book, you. not only thank is it you. dope, I read it. Um, I but, love that but you read it. But it's also like, it's really good. It's really, it's really, it flow. You're just a natural communicator. Thank you. Um, but also, I hear that it's sold out everywhere yeah, at the present s- moment. That's amazing, and I'm super grateful. It's sold out everywhere. They there's they could have maybe done things differently. It's still sold out. Okay, I'm trying to be in that moment it's, and be happy it, about that moment. It's and not that. You but know, here's, the Jesse, Will- here's, the, here's the Jesse right. Williams in me. Here's the Jesse Williams in me. Right. So. Yeah. As grateful as I, I'm more grateful for the people that have shown up at the bookstores That's and right. feel connected to and something. In this day and age, to go to a bookstore and buy a and book. And stand in line yeah. and wait to get it signed. Mm-hmm. Like it's, I, I it's haven't been thing. to a signing yet without tearing up. That and also the the the, the, people, the way people resonate with my story is wild touching. Mm-hmm. And then so when I first got the note that it sold out, I'm thinking, how exciting is that? And then I realized, well, wait a minute. How come such a, I know they sold a lot of books too. How come they're not sold out? And I realized because they put you in a category, right? Because right. it's a, because the book world is a blando world mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that what mm-hmm. we're going with, mm-hmm. right? And so when they look at somebody like me, they they look at oh, that's a hip hop book, and it's, so then it goes in a category. Yep. Which oh, means we'll only make so and so thousand. She's instead. a uh, radio personality, so then that goes into a category. Mm-hmm. She's Latina, oh, yeah. so then that goes into a small category, and then so that's how they decide how many books they order, right. and that's how they decide who cares about my story, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so um, that disturbs me sure. a bit. Nobody, and I, mean, I guess it's business, but it's it's something about that is low really, expectations do not feel good. But based on what the, is the hip hop? Well, thing, based or on is some it, metric that is well, that, that is this is also you're right. This does become I feel a little Jesse Williams, Williams about it because yeah. what this. By the way, it, I'm going to coin that today. I'm going to do that. If well, you, whenever I'm like. Fired up about something in the room. I'm gonna get yeah. I'm gonna J Dub on him. So (laughs) it it does. It does. And yeah, in my circles, it's it's, has become a term. I bet. Um, But uh, (laughs) but but I mean, yes. When you have when you have folks that are kind of putting you in a box, what what happens is this kind of um, like brown exceptionalism becomes a thing. Where like if you did, if you went out and killed somebody. Like that would be a reflection on you know how Puerto many books Ricans. they would have pre-ordered though. But if also, I would've but done also that? would have been like it would have been like a Puerto Rican problem. It would have been like a Latin women problem. Would, you know, girls, Latin girls are crazy, right? right. <laughs> if you do something negative, it goes to your race or your gender or your sexual orientation. Right. If you do something positive, I don't even think of you as Latina, right? I extract you from that group right. and put you in a white space, or which is really the same thing as a neutral space, mm. right? Like, oh, you speak so well, I don't even think of you as black. Instead of oh. Black people can speak so well. <laughs> right? It doesn't ref- doesn't trickle yeah, down yeah, to yeah. the people. Mm-hmm. It, we extract you from that group and keep that group down no matter what. So you take the best and brightest just as like an intrinsic kind of cultural yeah. background policy. So there, there, have been, there have been exceptional writers from uh, you know, Caribbean, Latin America or Central America, whatever, right. however they want to pin you down. Or hip hop obviously hip-hop sells a, a lot of content products and all these things. But all of those things don't reflect how they have how they predict where your where your book would sell. I think they we think hip hop book pe- people who are interested in hip hop are not necessarily interested in buying books. Didn't Steve Stout's book sell? I don't know Did what Jay-Z's his book sell. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why hmm. that didn't. I don't know why. So Doesn't I'm a- count. It's not. It's something else. It's like when people go, "Oh well, black movies don't travel. You can't black movie, black movies aren't big overseas. They don't sell overseas." While I, I have had agents tell me that. While Fast and the Furious made like five hundred million dollars in like forty eight hours, mm. when it's an all brown cast, right? <laughs> by and large, right? Like every shade of brown. Right. Well, they're looking me in the face, telling me how black movies don't travel, and then you go, "Oh yeah, but isn't, isn't maybe it Will Smith maybe movie? yeah, but or like The Rock had a big movie, yeah, but The Rock isn't. You mean black bad? Or, yeah, you like, mean bad black movies don't travel? <laughs> Not well, good well, black it doesn't. Movies travel. Bad, you know, movies perform. How many white movies yeah, fail yeah. all week, every week? Right. Every week. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tank. Yeah. And all those actors still work? Yeah. They're not punished for that. We're punished for It must be so fun did. to be in meetings like that with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that must be such a good time. Yeah. For the it, people around you. Um because I'm imagining that you must have some like white agents or lawyers. No, or, I do not. Really? I do not. Your whole team of color. That's true. Really? That's true. Wow. That's impressive. So nobody's surprised then when you, or they, they, nobody's surprised when you have That's been, strong I, opinions. I've had other representatives in the past. Oh. Um, and I've never made a decision for, to hire or not work with anybody based on race. Really? Entirely, no. Oh, so it's not like a conscious thing that I don't, you I don't, it's not, I am conscious of it. It is not a predetermining factor. Got it. Right? Like, 
my, it's it's about performance. Mm -hmm. I like to surround myself with really smart people. Right. I like to surround myself with people that inspire me to do better. And that also believe somewhat, in me. I would imagine, like minded to an extent. Uh, not necessarily. Right. I need you to be creative and dope. I need you to call me with ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't like to. I'm not, and this is this came. This was like when I was back when I was like single and dating and so in general with partners, people that are, that are around me. I don't want to be the cool guy. And I'm not the guy that like, I don't want to be like the dope guy that's the leader of the crew. I don't want that. Like, be, <laughs> right. I, don't, I, don't want, I don't need a girlfriend that like, like worships me and has no brain for herself. Right. Like, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to inspire me to go do some next level shit. Like, right. I, I need you to make me better. It's almost selfish. Like you're as strong as your team. Kind of, yeah, and you thinking. want, like, I'm only, this is, as far as I know, I only got one life. You want to be inspired. Like, I don't need you to, like, stroke, like, make me feel super, super swagged out in some shallow bullshit way that's, like, easily re yeah. replicable. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather be pushed. I'd rather call, you know, call my manager, bring something to me and be like, I don't know if I can do that. And be like, yeah, you can. And this is how. And this is why. Ooh. Like, oh, that's worth it. Like, just some button pusher. Just some middleman that's gonna tell me. Is I, my whole squad I paying found, attention to what he's saying I, I right now? I found that it's like a lot very of very important. A lot of the folks <laughs> in the business, and this is not a, like a direct shade at anybody. Just like a lot of the folks in the business that worked with me or other folks, always were giving reasons why I couldn't do things, mm. and not why I could. Well, thinking out the box. Yeah, you got to think out the box. For that. And not, or just like give. Yeah, I called them and they said, and they said, no, we're going Caucasian. Yeah, but it's a. The role is written for a, a person of color. Yeah, but they're going. They feel like it'll be more they're going Caucasian. Okay, great. Is that what they say? Is that oh, the term? All the time. They're going, going Caucasian. Going Caucasian. Yeah, sure. Then you have to is ask them. Is that the term? Then you go to them. It's a term. Um, it's it's there's all oh, there's a lot of terms around like supporting the they're going the, bland the, though. the structure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm introducing that. But I think that you have to Sorry. like always ask your people like. And then what did you say? Hmm. Ooh, Angie, I'm gonna take that, Angie. Like, oh, oh they, they they told me so we good. can't make more more books, right? And then what did you say? Because mm -hmm. I need to know why I'm paying you. Yeah. I, otherwise, I just get an answering machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need a I don't need a rep if I just get an answering machine to receive messages of telling me why I can't do shit. I have my publisher coming up to the show tomorrow because I want to have this conversation. I'm gonna ask him. And then what did you say? Yeah. Jesse wants to know. And then uh, yeah, what did you do? Yeah. Like, I, there's a reason we're here. Always, the people around you should add value to the situation. Yeah. Period. Ooh, so good. So good. All right, Jesse. Um, we can do this for four hours. We can. Anytime you um, feel fired up, I want you to come here and fire it up. Or just like call you in the in the car, just furious. Because <laughs> um, you probably get furious every day by something. I, so I much yeah, it's, it's a nice, in the world. It's a nice balance of, uh, of <sighs> laughter and, uh, and, and frustration. <laughs> they both motivate each other. Yeah, so uh, get that abroji. Watch Stay Woke. Stay Woke on Thursday, BET, 9 uh -huh. o'clock. Uh-huh. And then, app. Is Grey, Grey's Anatomy is coming back next season, That's right. yes? Because I heard. Show on TV. I, I knew that, but then I had heard an awful rumor. Some Somebody in here told me that. Well, well I should have known it was. Because they, they also said scandal. They were like, scandal and Grey's Anatomy are not coming back. I was like, no I fucking think part way. of that, the only reason, and, and, and there's totally a segment, there was actually an article that just came out that was like, Grey's Anatomy is actually way better than people give credit for. Everybody always goes, oh, that show's still on, and kind of like maybe even rolls their eyes. Because no shows are on this long. Mm hmm. By no shows are on this long. Right. Like, so it's like, oh, it must be you like chalk it up or something else. I would also say like, not only are no shows on this long, no shows do as many episodes as we, very few shows do as many episodes as mm -hmm. we do for this long. Like a lot of shows do like eight episodes, right. 13 episodes. We do 25, 24 episodes of an hour long show uh, a year. And um, our ratings are better than they, they're getting better. Is that right? They're getting stronger. And more people discover the show on Netflix. Like, there's people that have grown up with the show, right? It's 12 years running. Right. So there's kids that started when they were 12 years old, now they're 24. That's you've got, you've got, there's more like young people discovering season one and two on Netflix right now than watch re any other show on TV. Like more, there's more new, there's like three generations, five generations of folks that watch the show because you can pick it up at different spots. And, wow. So it's a, you know, Shonda created a, a, you know, a beast and she's still directly connected to it and, and it's having a real rejuvenation right now. So wow. that thing ain't dying until Shonda kills it. I was sad to see Sa hear that Sarah was leaving. Yeah, Sara Ramirez is uh, is taking a break. Um, she was the well Spanish deserved. girl, Latin girl yeah. on the show. Tremendous, tremendous actress. Actually, and now she's actress. gone. We need another um, one. Can we plug? Can we plug that we'll spot make with some another calls one? Calls and see see what we can do. But you I, know what? We might have to go Caucasian there. No. 
<laughs> this might be. I know, know many, many amazing Latin actresses. If you need any, re- if they need mm. any referrals, I I'll can. find some excuses not to hire them. Because <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> they're going to go bland. Though. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's a, And look, I mean, that's a perfect example, actually. I don't know how I overlooked that. People always talk about how, like, diversity, you know, how diversity doesn't work and we got to, you know, you got to go neutral. I remember when they wrote that, that movie Noah with Russell Crowe playing Noah for some reason. Mm-hmm. There weren't even white people there. And, but all the people were white. And, and they, the writers explained. <laughs> it's so funny. The, the writers explained why they were like, you know, why did you make everybody white? Like they weren't, they were, these were not white people. And he's like, well, you know, I thought about making it like a Benetton ad, but. I, oh my. But, yeah. But I, and I'm paraphrasing, but he definitely said like Benetton ad, but we figured we wanted to make it neutral so everybody could relate to these people. Oh. This idea of like white, whiteness as central, right? It's like anybody can, we always have to see ourselves in your body, but you never have to see yourself in ours. Um, which is kind of something that Broji subversively does is mm. that you're using a different a, a body other than your own to communicate how you feel. Right. So if you're using a Latino body or a gay body or, or a right or a black body to communicate your LOL or your I love you, maybe subversively that can just have an impact of kind of humanizing all of us. Mm. Um, but but my I but, just thought it was an app. I didn't mean to like. Well, you know, I didn't realize you were. It is just an app. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, but Grey's has been the most diverse show on TV since they won. Mm-hmm. You have you know black Asian, black Latin. Asian Latin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know it's not perfect, but it's heads and tails above any other show and has been, right. and and been the number one show on TV. So you tell me it doesn't work, but it's the number one on show on TV. It has all these different races and gay characters and a trans woman uh, arc and all this stuff and gay patients and all these issues, but it's a number one show on TV, but you tell me it doesn't work, so it makes money. So you're even willing, you, so you, you always use the money ticket. Oh, well, we need to make money and that doesn't really make money. So, but you're willing to not make money to keep things Blando. white. Blando. Um, um, <laughs> I'm gonna so coin that phrase Yeah, today. buddy. <laughs> it's gonna stick. Oh, I think I gotta play. I know, we have to go. Sorry, I kept him so, too long. Oh, damn you, Angie. I because was, I wanna talk about- Not very talkative, that's I, the thing. I, so clearly, I wanna talk about all the injustices in the world in one sitting. Yeah. But unfortunately, we're not going to get to all that today. But we can watch Grey's Anatomy. I you look forward to the Grey's. next season. We'll be season. back next season. Season yeah. Thursday, 9 o'clock. We'll learn uh, what we need to know about Black Lives Matter yep. movement. Yep. Um, That's on BT, And you can uh, Play Store or uh, App Store get that Abroji and enjoy it. And let us know what you think about it at, at Abroji app on Twitter. Amazing. I can't wait.